hi and welcome in this new video, hope you're doing well, hope your day is great and stay because you are going to discover the new features of Airflow 2.5. My name is Mark Lamati, I'm the head of customer education at Astronomer, best selling instructor on Udemy and if you want to stay up to date with Airflow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel that will help me a lot and smash the like button if you want to see more videos like that. That being said, it's time to see the new features of Airflow 2.5. Let's begin with the user interface updates and maybe one of the most awaited updates is that finally you can clear tasks of a task group in a single click. Before 2.5 you had to clear one task at a time for a task group but now it's over. Indeed, if we look at a DAG with task groups, you can see by clicking on one of the task groups, let's say this one, you have a new button clear. That button clears all the tasks of a task group at once, exactly like with subdags before. And by the way, if you are still using subdags, you should use task groups instead. So it's pretty amazing. Now you don't have to do it one by one, just click on that button and you are done. Another nice feature of Airflow 2.5 is that if you click on a DAG run or a task instance, you have a new button add note. Indeed, you are able to add notes to a DAG run or to a task instance. That might be useful if you want to attach additional information to a task instance or a DAG run. For example, here, let's say uh, nothing wrong here. Then if you click on save note, that add a new note to the task instance and you can see here the color has changed a little bit. There is a mark on the task instance to show that there is a note for that task instance. You can do the same for DAG run. So again, if you want to attach some notes, you can do it with Airflow 2.5. Another cool feature is that if you pass params to your DAG run, then you can copy those params to your clipboard easily. Let me show you that. If you trigger your DAG with a config, so with params, and then you put that JSON and click on trigger. Now in the details of your DAG run, so that one, if you scroll down, you can see a new button copy and that allows you to copy the params to your clipboard. As you know, when you update an existing DAG, that takes a little bit of time for Airflow to parse the DAG again and take your updates. But the question is, how do you know when Airflow has refreshed your DAG? Well, guess what? There is a new thing in Airflow 2.5. If you go to the code view, Instead of looking at the code to know if the updates have been taken into account by Airflow, you can just look at the parsed at date. That's what you can see here and compare it to the current date time. So now you are able to check if Airflow knows about the last updates of your DAG just by looking at this date. You don't have to look into the code anymore. The last update with the user interface is the datasets view. Indeed, now you can filter datasets by updates in the past. So for example, you can look at the datasets that have been updated for the past 30 days, 7 days, 24 hours, and so on. In addition, you can even search for a specific dataset just by typing here the name of your dataset, for example, my file underscore two. And as you can see, I only get my file two as expected. If you have many datasets, this feature is pretty neat. Okay, that's it about the user interface. Let me tell you what's new in the DAG authoring part. First thing first, now you can mix the data sets with the task for API. Let me remind you something. If you look at the data sets view, you have the producer DAG that updates two data sets, my file two and my file. Airflow knows that because we specify the outlets parameter in the tasks. Indeed, if you look at the producer DAG, we have two tasks with the outlets parameter. For the first task, we specify my file as the value of the outlets. So that means this task updates the following data set. And for the second task, we define the value my file two to the outlets parameter, which means that task updates the data set my file two. Now with the task API, you can do it in a more elegant way. Indeed, if you look at the example from the documentation, you can pass a data set as an input of a task as shown right there and that set the parameter inlet it might be useful for data in lineage. And if you want to specify that a task produces or updates a data set, you can do it as well. Instead of using the outlets parameter, you just use that notation and you return your data set. Now the outlets parameter is automatically defined for you behind the scene. And as you can see, it's more elegant than before. Now you can pass seamlessly data sets between your tasks with the task for API. There is a new update in Airflow 2.5 that allows you to turn any Python function 
as a sensor. Let me show you how to do it. So create a new DAG and then make the following imports for the decorators, task and DAG, and you need to import a new class POC return value. We will come back at it later. Then we import daytime for the start date and sleep as we are going to use it. We can define the DAG object with the DAG decorator, the start date, the schedule, and the capture parameters. Then we create the tasks. The first one is a dummy task that takes an input and returns that input. And this is where it's more interesting we define a sensor. At task.sensor is a new way for defining a Python function as a sensor. We can pass the usual parameters that any sensor can have, for example, POC interval, 60 seconds, so we want to check that task every 60 seconds, then the timeout, always define a timeout, and a mode, here, POC. Then just below, we create that task, check dummy, which is a sensor again, it takes an input. Now in that function, we can do whatever we want. We can implement the logic that we want that will be evaluated every 60 seconds as defined by the POC interval. So with that notation, you have all the flexibility that you ever dreamed of. Here the condition is simple because we check only if the input equals to 100, but in the real world, you will check if a file exists in a S3 bucket or if an entry exists in a table, for example. Now we have the condition, we need to return something and we need to return a POC return value object. That object takes two arguments. The first one is if it is done or not. Basically, you will put the value returned by your condition, in that case, ret, and then the XCOM value, if any. In this case, we want to return a string with the current input. Finally, we define the dependencies. As you can see, we pass 100 to the dummy task, so the sensor will succeed, and we call the DAG. Save the file and let's see if it works. Back on the F UI, if you trigger the DAG, you will end up with the same output as me. And if you click on check dummy, which is the sensor, and look at the logs, you can see that the criteria has been met, so the sensor has succeeded. Finally, another cool feature of F2.5 is the new trigger rule, one underscore done. Remember that you had one underscore success and one underscore failed, now you have one underscore done. What does it mean? It means that as soon as one of the parents of a task has been executed, the task runs. You can see the state of that task according to the states of the parents in the following images. Don't hesitate to pause the video if you need to. If you want to try F2.5 and you have Docker installed on your computer, it is as simple as executing the two following commands. Otherwise, you can use the Astro CLI, which is really the easiest and fastest way to run Airflow locally. That's it about Airflow 2.5. I hope you are really pumped by those new updates. I wish you a wonderful day. Take care and see you for another video.